everyone and welcome to stamp and chat live i am gina from gina k designs and it's so great to see all of you coming in from all around the united states and all around the world tonight we're going to have a lot of fun because i'm going to be playing with some school supplies now i love this time of year because i always enjoy going to the big box department stores like target or roam around walmart a little bit and see all of the school supplies come out I don't know what it is, but I just always remember that being such an exciting time of the year when I was a little kid, getting brand new crayons or a brand new, brand new box of colored pencils or markers and being able to just crack open the box of crayons and the way they smelled. I don't know, maybe it's just me, but I love that stuff. And I'm always amazed at how inexpensive school supplies are this time of year. It's kind of like it's the draw to get you in the store. And I was walking around, I saw like boxes of crayons for $1.06. I saw colored pencils, really cheap. And even the jumbo sets, which is what I got, weren't that expensive compared to the high quality art supplies. Now, I'm not going, make no mistake, these supplies do not necessarily take the place of a high quality art supply. If you're learning to color with Copic markers or you're learning to do colored pencil work or you're learning to work with watercolor, I suggest that you always get the best quality product that you can afford for your budget because the better quality of product, the easier it is going to be to learn how to use it. You know, um, good colored pencils have a lot more pigment in them and a lot less wax. Markers, you know, the Copic markers have a better blending quality than what I'm going to show you tonight. But at the same time, most of you out there have some pretty good quality art supplies. And then when the kids want to play or the grandkids come over and they want to stamp, I don't know about you, but those times were always like, oh, you know, be careful. That's a Copic marker. I paid a lot of money for that. This is a great way to get the kids involved. You can give them a set of supplies. You can even play with these supplies with them and still create some really beautiful things. So before we go on, why don't we say hello to Tom? Hey, Tom. Hey, everybody. How are you? I am much better than horrible. <laughs> That's great. That's great. You got your big headphones on tonight. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. And thinking about uh, the back to school days, you uh, got me all thinking about it. wasn't an especially exciting time for me. We didn't look forward to going back to school because uh, <laughs> we were in Catholic school and the beatings would start up again. So. <laughs> that was a long time ago. <laughs> Back in the days, yeah. <laughs> did you always get new school supplies or did your mom just kind of scrounge around for whatever was in the drawers? <laughs> yeah, no, I think we got a few things, but um, yeah, yeah, a new, uh, a few, we, we had to dress up for school, so we got some maybe new shoes and, you know. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Yeah. Those were, I mean, I remember back then, you know, feeling so stressed out with school and everything. And looking back now as a full blown adult, those were the good old days, weren't they? Yeah. <laughs> they really were. Laurie, uh, Laurie wants to know, did I get smacked with the ruler? Oh, of course. <laughs> and a few other things too. And I was one of the good kids. <laughs> we all got it. So, you know, yeah, everybody, uh, everybody joined in the fun. <laughs> I don't agree with it at all. I don't agree with, you know, getting hit in school, but I have to say it made us who we are today, right? Oh yeah. Some of us, some of us <laughs> deserved it once in a while, for sure. <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, tonight nobody's getting hit. We're just going to have fun tonight. So let me show you my haul from Target. I actually went to Target. So let me show you my Target haul here. Uh, this is what I got. Look at this stuff. Okay, so 
I got the 64 pack of crayons and I got that because it has the sharpener <laughs> and I really wanted the crayon sharpener. And I think these were about, I don't know, maybe about $8, $9, something like that. Of course, it's different all over the country, depending on where you live. And we live out in the middle of the Midwest, so it might not be as bad out here. And also a lot of these products you can get online at, you know, Amazon or even some of the... Um, Crafty stores carry some of this stuff. So I got the box of 64 crayons. And then I got these. These are the Colors of the World pencils. I love the Crayola is doing this. These are all different skin tones. And for those of you that have a lot of people stamps, these are great because you can create all different skin tones. And this just makes me happy that Crayola is doing that. It's a more inclusive set than it used to be. Okay, and then I bought this 100 pack of colored pencils because, I mean, why not, right? Fantastic. I'll answer some of those questions. I do see some of your questions coming through, so I will answer some of those questions. Then I bought these. These are super tip washable markers. Now, you don't have to get the super tip ones. Just get washable markers if you want to do my technique that I'm going to do because washable markers are like ultra water-based markers. You know, kids can draw all over themselves and it just washes right off, which makes it great for some of these stamping techniques. So I got the Super Tip 100 pack of washable markers. Then I got these washable kids paint. I have not opened these yet, but I think I'm gonna try one little technique with them just to see if it works. So I like that. And then I got these Bic markers. Now, not every store has the Bic markers. I actually found these at Walmart. Um, I had to go to Walmart for these. They didn't have them at Target. And Bic markers are alcohol markers. So if maybe you're just thinking that you would like to do some of the cool shading techniques, um, maybe the, the cool texturizing techniques, these markers work really well for it. What you will need, though, is one Copic blender pen for this. So if you have a Copic blender pen, and you don't have to have this one. This is the sketch, uh, I mean, the um, original Copic marker blender pen. It's the square barrel. Most of you probably have the sketch one, which is this one. It's the oval barrel. Um, but, you know, all you need is a Copic blender pen and you can do some fun techniques with these Bic markers. Plus, these are really fun for, um, I don't know, they're just color nice and solid. I'll show you in a little bit. So tonight's technique, let's just go back to the front shot for a minute because I want to make sure tonight I'm just going to throw a bunch of techniques at you. I don't know that I'll make a card. Maybe I'll make one at the very end if I have time, but I wanna show you a ton of techniques because I think that's what's fun about this. And that's what's gonna be fun when you stamp with the kids or the grandkids too. Oh, let's try this, let's try that, let's try this. Lots of fun. And if you are a brand new stamper and you have a very limited budget, this is gonna be great for you because you're gonna be able to have fun right away. You don't need the most expensive stuff to get started. But I will reiterate, if you really wanna learn how to be a colored pencil artist or a watercolorist or a Copic marker specialist, you do need the high quality stuff. So always buy whatever you can afford, like the best quality that you can afford. But this is a great fun way to start. Okay. Somebody asked what the difference is between Premier and Scholar pencils um, and what which one is best to use on black or dark cardstock. So um, you can use the best pencils would be the Premier pencils. The Scholar pencils are very, very hard. They're meant for really um, drawing, you know, like drawing in color, super, super hard, fine point. The Premier pencils, which are the ones I use, they're the ones that blend really nicely with Gamsol. And um, you can use any of them on black or dark cardstock, but for certain colors, you may want to stamp an image with white pigment ink, air dry it or heat set it first, and then color on top of that to get a brighter version of that color. And if you want to know more about that, look up, go to my YouTube channel and type in Gina K Black Magic Technique, and you'll see exactly how I do that on dark cardstock. Okay, so let's get started with the first technique, shall we? Let's just, I want to show you guys how easy it is to color with a little bit of Gamsol and colored pencil. A lot of people say, oh, you know, can I use Crayola 
pencils for that. So before you make the investment, let me show you that you absolutely can. So I'm going to just pick a couple stamp sets here. This is the Colossal Coneflower. I'll use this one because it's a nice big stamp and it'll be easy for you to see the color and the shading. All right, so I'm going to get my Misty for this. Okay, let's start with the Misty. I'm going to pick this up with the Misty. All right, and then I'm going to use my, um, well, actually, I'm not going to do that yet. I'm going to do that on a different technique. For this one, I'm just going to stamp it in black. Okay, I'm going to use black onyx ink for this. Black onyx ink works great for colored pencil and Gamsol and also for Copic markers. It will not work for watercolor. So if you're going to use watercolor, use our amalgam ink. You can use amalgam ink for anything. Amalgam ink works great for colored pencils, for Copics, and for watercolor. So if you only want one, get the amalgam. But if you're if you don't do a lot of watercolor, the black onyx dries super fast and you don't have to heat set it, which is something that I like. Okay, so there we have our image. I'm gonna just put that aside. And let's pick a colored pencil. Now I'm telling you that um, the difference, you're gonna see the difference in the vibrancy of the color and how easy it is to blend. When you use a Prismacolor pencil, you're gonna get a lot more pigment and a little less wax. When you use a Crayola pencil or Rose Art, one of those brands, you're gonna get a lot more wax and a lot less pigment. And that's why they're so much less expensive. But you can still do this. You can still blend color. Let's see, that might be a good color. I'll just test it over here. That might be good. Let's go one shade darker than that. Let's see. I'm just testing out a couple colors here. Oh yeah, let's let's use this one. I'm just gonna make this a purple coneflower and we'll see how the purple does. Okay, so again, I do like using a pencil sharpener. I like my pencils to be nice and sharp. These don't sharpen quite as easily as my Prismacolor ones, but they're still fine. And that gives me some nice dark color there. Okay. So just like I would normally color when I'm using colored pencils and Gamsol, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to color real heavy right here. Get some nice vibrant color there. And if you already have Prismacolor pencils or you have a few and you want to supplement with Crayola, you will feel the difference. Uh, it's definitely a waxier feeling to this. Yeah, and so Tom, if you see any questions, because I know questions are gonna be flying, just go ahead and ask them and I will definitely answer. Okay. We'll just do a couple here. Are the pencils the one you use with Gamsol? Yes, these, well, these are not the pencils I normally use with Gamsol. Normally I use Prismacolor Premier pencils because like I said, they have a lot more pigment. Um, and a little less wax, but you need a wax-based pencil to use the Gamsol. So Crayola will fit the bill. Oh, and a question about your uh, sewing machine behind you. Oh, you, yeah. You have some videos using that. Yeah, I have videos using the sewing machine. Um, the one behind me is called the Janome So Mini. My original Janome broke. Um, and then I bought this turquoise colored one because they came out with that. But uh, my original one was a white color and that's the one I have all my videos in. All right, so I'm just gonna use some regular Gamsol. I don't have very much Gamsol left here. So I'm just gonna put that into my little bowl here. And then I do have a blending stump. Now, you're gonna wanna use a blending stump. If you don't have a blending stump, you could try using a little paintbrush or something like that. But I would suggest using blending stumps. And the good news is you can get blending stumps at the big box craft stores. And you can get Gamsol at most of them as well. And you can get Crayola. So, okay, so I'm gonna dip this into the Gamsol. And when you dip it in, you don't wanna just do it like that. That's not enough. You want to put it in there and let it soak into the blending stump for a minute. 
That pencil sharpener is an eye orbit pencil sharpener. Okay, and then I'm gonna start right on that color and I'm gonna work in a circular motion and I'm gonna pull that color down. Now you can see, because there's not a lot of pigment, it doesn't pull as much color because there's not a lot of pigment, but it does pull some. So I can go back and I can add more color in there because that Gamsol dries almost instantly. And then I can work more color down if it's not enough. All right, see how that's working there? So you can see, you can blend Crayola pencils with Gamsol. And so if you're just getting started and you wanna kind of see if you like colored pencils and you like the technique and you don't wanna make a big investment, but you want a full range of colors that maybe you'd use in, a, in an adult coloring book or something like that, or you want those cheaper craft supplies so that the kids don't ruin your good stuff, it's fun. It actually is fun and it's moving. You can see the color is moving. Uh, yes, you can also use lavender spike oil. Anything that you can use with Prismacolor pencils, you can use with Crayola pencils. You can use the Zestit if you're in the UK, um, and you can use the lavender spike oil too. And I'm getting I'm getting ni a nice blend there. I kind of like the texture that I'm getting out of it. As you can see, it's kind of a little more. Um, a little more textured. It's got a little bit more of a rugged look to it, but it's very pretty. Is that heavy cardstock? No, this is the Gina K Designs uh, white layering weight cardstock. I really like using our really super smooth cardstock for Gamsol blending. I just think colored pencil blending works so well on our cardstock. But if you're using these colored pencils without the Gamsol, which you can, um, then I would recommend our Artist Choice cardstock because that has a little more of a tooth to it. So it'll grab a little more color off of the pencil and you'll get a more textured look from it right away. I'm just bringing that down in a straight line there. That's kind of a thin. And you can see I have to go back and add a little bit more color on there. And that's just fine. It's easy to do. And I'm just pulling that color down. Couple of requests for a zoom in. Oh, zooming in? Sure, I can zoom in. I can do that. How's that? Yes. Is that good? Sometimes I zoom in and people will say, oh my gosh, zoom out. You're too close. <laughs> because they're watching me on a, you know, jumbotron. Maybe that's just the front shot, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'm just blending that down. And we'll do just a little bit here. This is a single petal all by itself out here. My daughter Alicia drew this cone flower. I just love it. It's so pretty. This one is on order. I just checked and it's uh should be coming soon. Cone flowers are always so much fun, and this one's so big which is really fun to color. So there we go. So you can see, definitely able to do Copic color, I mean, uh, colored pencil blending. Now for the center, I'm just gonna grab kind of a, a tannish color, light brown. And the, the uh, Crayola pencils all come sharpened already, but they definitely need a point. So there we go, that was a pretty good point. And for this, I'm just gonna lightly shade. So I'm using a real light touch and I'm just shading. Mary would like to know what is your opinion of the Tortillon blenders? Of the Tortillon, of the, so um, I don't know how to say that. I don't know if it's tor tor Tortillon or Tortillon. I don't like them as much as I like blending stumps um, because the blending stump is pressed paper and the, the other one is rolled paper. So it's very, um, it doesn't put a lot of pressure. 
those are really meant for charcoal drawings and things like that, where you're just lightly pushing very soft coal and um, very soft types of pencils. This, you know, gets in there and allows you to just put pressure down on that. And it's, it stays to a point. The tortillons, they, they actually just smush and then they get soaking wet. So I would definitely recommend going with the blending stump for this technique. All right, so there we go. We did a little bit of blending. This is from the Colossal Cone Flower stamp set. And you can see the colored pencils, the Prismacolor pencils will blend with Gamsol. Okay, so I'm gonna put that aside. That's my first technique. Now my second technique I wanna show you, I wanna show you these Bic markers. I wanna show you how nice these are, okay? So let me find another, um, another stamp real quick. Okay, so here's a big stamp by Lisa Hetrick. I like this one. This is from Seasons of Joy, just a big stamp and I'm gonna stamp it a couple times onto a piece of white cardstock with black onyx ink again, because we're gonna use the Bic markers. And I, I used to use, I do have a video. Um, oh gosh, Tom, it's from like a hundred years ago, really long time ago, one of my first videos. I used Bic markers. I didn't have a whole lot of uh, spendable cash, <laughs> expendable cash back when I first started. So I actually have some videos using these kinds of supplies. And I do have one, let me zoom out a bit so you can see that. And I'll show them all again at the end. So this is just a big flower here. Seasons of Joy, it's called. And I'm going to stamp this with black onyx ink too. Black onyx, again, will work with alcohol markers because it's a water-based ink. Might want to stamp it twice, we'll see. Especially for the detail in the center. It's got those little speckles in there. There's nothing wrong with that stamp. That's how Lisa designed it, to have those little speckles. I love that, so cute. Let me do a little bit more in the center there. I just used an ink cube just so I could get into the center. Okay. So there we have this nice, big, I can see your comment, Annie. I can see it. You got it. It's coming through. <laughs> now, I'm not sure if you made another comment that I missed. That happens sometimes. Okay. So I'm going to show you a couple different things here. First, I'm going to show you on just a little bit of the cardstock here, how these blend. Now, this, these do not blend exactly the same way as Copics, but they're not bad. And again, they're super cheap. So I'm going to take these two blues here, okay? Because they're pretty close in shade order. You could probably get these two pinks to blend. You could probably get this peach and pink and these greens to blend. It's kind of hard going from... With a Copic marker, you could go from this red to this peach without a problem, but that would be a little harder with the Bic markers. So let's start with the darker blue here. I'm gonna color a little bit with the darker blue. Yeah, they're better than horrible, that's right. <laughs> so I'm gonna zoom in a little so you can see this. Okay, so First of all, one thing that I like about the Bic markers is you can see that you get a fairly smooth blend right off the bat, like a smoothness. Unlike a water-based marker, and this, let me show you what I mean. Here's a water-based marker, and I love these markers. I'm not saying these aren't good. They're just different, and they're used for different things. When you use a water-based marker and you do that, See how it looks more streaky? And this just looks more airbrushed. So that's kind of a fun thing about even these cheaper Bic markers. All right, now I'm gonna use this lighter blue and I'm gonna go up against that and I'm gonna color that. And then I'm gonna go down into that blue a little bit and I'm gonna go back up and down and up. 
And see how I'm starting to create a fade of color there? Now you can just wipe off the excess just by scribbling some off. So you can see if I keep going, it'll get lighter because my pen is going to get lighter. So that's a pretty good fade, right? It's not, not terrible. It's not as good as Copic, but if you're just getting started and you want something that'll blend a little bit, it'll blend. So then you would use this in a similar way to a Copic. You would color a little bit darker in the, you know, where the petal is coming out of the flower. Like that. And then you would start your light color, your lightest down here at the end. And you can work your way up all the way into that darker color. And then blend that into that lighter color. And again, it's not going to be perfect because it's not a Copic marker, but you're going to be able to get some of that. You can flick that color down a little bit. Like that. Can you mix the Copic with the Bic? Yeah, sure you can. That's not a problem at all. So that gives you a little bit of a nice um, little bit of shading there. And if we did the whole thing, it would look very pretty. It would look very glowy, right? Okay, now let me show you something else that you can do that's really fun. So you can take a petal and you can color it with straightaway marker. Just get a nice solid color on there. And this is what I think is fun to do with these markers. Okay, so that's nice and solid, right? Then I like to use my Copic blending pen. And I like to do a design. So even though maybe I'm not getting the best shading out of this, I'm going to create like a plaid look in this petal. And the way I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna start with some lines that go this way. This is with my Copic blending pen. And I'm not going all the way to the edge, but I'm getting close. And then I'm gonna go back and do a second coat just to lighten that up. Okay, so I've got some lines in there. And then I'm gonna do the opposite and create like little plaid petals. And it creates some cute texture in your petals. Isn't that fun? A fun little texture. Now, if you don't like the plaid idea, you can color a different one. I just have this blue out, but all the colors are very vibrant this way. They all are really nice and fun to work with. I'm gonna make sure you lay down enough ink and Bic markers are an alcohol ink. Now I have to tell you, Sharpie markers are also an alcohol ink. I do not have luck doing this with Sharpies. I don't know if it's a different solvent that they use, but Bic uses something that's a little more like Copic and they work really well together. So again, I'm gonna get this out and this one I'm gonna do polka dots. Yeah, this is gingham, right? So this one I'm just gonna do little polka dots. And I always like to do a second coat just to really brighten them up. I'll go back over those first ones again. And this is fun too. So if you have like little animal stamps and you wanna color their fur, 
you can go in with a Copic blending pen and you can add a little texture onto their fur. So I'm just adding these little polka dots. I like doing the two coats right away because I kind of remember where they were. <laughs> Okay, so you can see there now I have a little polka dot design. Is that fun? So that's some fun things that you can do with just basic Bic markers. Yeah, I'll show the package again. This is called Bic Intensity. Let me zoom out here so you can see it. Um, the Bic Intensity markers. And if you want, I mean, I can link all of these too to this video so you can find all of the ones that I used. But they've got a nice little carrying case and this is great to just throw in your bag and yeah. Let's see, what did, I can't really do a whole blend out because I have so many more techniques that I wanna show you. But I do think that the, the technique that I like the best, I, I would do this more with Copic markers. I'm not like as, excited about this as I am about these fun textures. Okay, I'll zoom one more time here so you can see, and then we'll get on to our next technique. There we go. Uh, answer to uh, Linda's question, yes, I am awake, Linda, <laughs> for the moment. Oh, good. <laughs> Glad to hear it. <laughs> okay, so there we go. I'm gonna take this aside. Again, my, my video tonight is just to show you techniques. It's not necessarily to make a whole card, but these are fun. Yeah, the Arteza markers are great. They are great. Um, they would not be in the same class as a Bic marker. They would be a notch, definitely several notches above. They are beautiful. So, you know, Arteza, that's, you're getting into art supplies. You're not getting into like, you know, school supplies then. Um, how do you use the color blending pencil? Oh, Prismacolor Premier Pencils. Well, that kind of just pushes the color around a little bit. I'm not a super big fan of that um, blending pencil that comes with that. I prefer Gamsol, but the blending pencil kind of softens over the line between the two colors. So... Okay, so I'm gonna get another um, stamp set here because I wanna show you these crayons. So I'm gonna use the Elegant Asters set for this. And I'm just picking stamps that are kind of good for the technique that I'm showing you. And you can dig through your collection and find the perfect ones for what you wanna do. All right, so um, the Copic Blender pen and the Chow, Copic Chow blender, they're all the same. The only difference between a Copic original pen, like I have here, I have the Copic original, which is square. I have the Copic Sketch blender pen, which is oval. And the Copic Chow, which looks a little more like this. This is a Chow marker. I don't have a blender in the Chow. They're all the same. The only difference is... Um, the barrel, and some people like the square, some people like the oval, and some people like the round, and then the uh, brush head. So on the sketch marker and on the chow marker, there is a um, brush tip and there is a chisel end. On the original, you get this little bullet end. See that? and then you get this chisel end. So it's really a preference, but they'll all work the same way. The fluid inside is exactly the same. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna, Tom's playing music. <laughs> all right. Yes, I've tried some of those Blick markers and they're not too bad. And there's a new brand out um, called Oleo or something like that. And I see a lot of uh, very good artists and influencers using that brand. 
And I think that's going to be a, a very big brand that you're going to see a lot of, very similar to Copic quality. So those are really nice too. Tonight, I'm not showing you a lot of fancy art supplies. Tonight, I'm showing you how to have fun with, with, with the kids, really. <laughs> So, okay, so I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Olo markers. Thank you, Mindy Egan. How are you, Mindy? Yes, Olo. Thank you. Yes, I've seen them. And yeah, I've seen a hoo hoo too. Oh, hoo hoo. <laughs> I've seen those. Um, okay, so I'm going to use my Crayola. And of course, I'm going to use white because I'm going to show you if you're new, if you're, if you're old school, you've seen this before. I know you have. But if you're new, this is going to be really fun. This is Crayon Resist. So crayon resist is really fun. You use a white crayon. If you want to resist on colored cardstock, you can use the same colored crayon. So you could stamp on pink cardstock, use a pink crayon, and then do a darker ink blend over it if you want. But my favorite is the white cardstock and the white Crayola crayon. And this is not meant to be colored in perfectly. This is meant to look sketchy. So you're just gonna take your crayon and you're gonna do like some sketchy lines on each of the petals. I don't need that in there. I wanna be able to turn this card stock as I go. And you're just getting wax off of the, uh, the crayon to do this. Now, I will tell you that I have had some luck doing this same exact technique with a skinny birthday candle because it's really all about the wax. It's not about the color. Um, but not all birthday candles work. So if you've got one in your drawer and you want to just give it a go, that might be fun for you to try. Um, be, but it depends. Some waxy candles are just too hard and they really don't kind of grip to the paper. But some do. So it'd be worth trying just a skinny birthday candle. Okay. All right. Every once in a while, Tom has to stop playing because he's got to advance the comments. <laughs> Sometimes they get stuck. And there's so many of them coming in tonight. Fast and furious. Got a lot of people here tonight. So here's the downside of this technique. I have no idea where I started. I have no idea. So I'm trying to feel for wax. I think I've probably gone around twice now. <laughs> but if you're not sure, just, you know, okay, I know I'm there. I can feel it. And then I'm going to do a little bit in the center. Now this is going to look very messy, but it's really, really fun. So I'm going to use a dark blue for this. I guess I'm in a blue mood tonight. But I'm going to use blue denim for this. Let me get my little ink stand just so that I don't have to hold it. Oh, thank you guys so much for the thumbs up. I sure appreciate that. All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to just ink blend right on top of this. Okay. So I'm going to get really ink up my brush. And then... See, I'm going to go right in the center here, and I'm going to start bringing that color out. I can see a couple that I missed, but that's all right. That'll show you the difference. Okay. So now once I get that color on there, then I'm going to take a piece of paper towel and watch what happens when I rub the paper towel over it. Look how white it gets. Isn't that fun? I was looking at the comments too much and not focusing, so I missed a couple petals. But you see how fun that is? Isn't that awesome? I love the way that looks. It's so sketchy. It looks so modern, and it just has a really cool, I don't know, oh, a dot where you start. Good idea, Lori. So Lori puts a dot on the paper where she starts. That's what I should have done, and then I would have known my way around. Very good idea. Thank you for that suggestion. Now, you can also do this, um, you get a wax buildup. Oh, that comment went by really fast. You do get a wax buildup. <coughs> it's not easy to stamp on that, definitely. Um, no, I don't get a wax buildup on my brush at all. 
I do resist techniques a lot and it works just fine. See, there's like no, no wax on there at all. Yeah, so that's a fun technique to do. You can color butterflies this way and sketchy leaves for fall and then do those real deep browns and, you know, uh, deep greens and stuff. Okay, so I, I, I'm i sorry, guys. The comments are going so fast. I can't keep up. Uh, let's see. Love the white crayon resist, but a question. Could you use a white colored pencil? Yeah, um, well... Let's try it. I'm not 100% sure. I did a video last, maybe two weeks ago, where I used a white Prismacolor pencil. But hey, while we're here, let's give it a try. We'll see. I still have a couple more techniques to show you. So, all right, so I'm just gonna scribble here. I'll just scribble a line or a couple lines and we'll test it out. I think it's gonna work. So, here we go. Oh, yeah, look at that. Look at that. That came right up, those lines. So, yeah, you can also use your white. Look at that. So you can use your white Crayola pencil to do the same thing. Boy, I wish I could go back and fill that in, but I can't. All right, so there you go. Yeah, the kids love that because it's kind of like you can play a game with the kids like magic it's like a magic trick where you color the whole thing in with the white pencil or the white crayon, and then you get the ink blending out and let them do that. And then there's like magic. <laughs> okay. So the next thing I want to do is I want to show you, I'm just whipping through here because I got a lot to show you. Let me get this out of the way. Oh, give me one second here. All right. And if I miss your question, I'm really sorry. You guys want Tom to play, he can't slow the comments down. So I can't do both. But the next thing I want to show you are these super tip markers. Let's zoom out on these. I love these. These are super fun. Super tips, super fun. Let me show you a technique. Where did all my card stack go? Oh, here's some. Okay. So I just, I'm going to grab a couple scraps of card stock for this. So I'm going to pick some really bright colors for this. Oh, you guys are so welcome. It's so much fun. So I'm going to pick a real bright yellow. I'm going to pick a bright orange. And I'm going to pick a bright green like this. Okay. So when you do a technique like this, you always want to remember your rainbow order. So imagine that the rainbow starts with red, then it goes to orange, then yellow, then green, blue, purple, right? So you don't want to do this order because you don't want these two colors touching each other. You want to do this order. You don't want to do this order because you don't want orange and green to touch each other. So I think this big tote of 100 was about $16 but you could do a lot with these. Okay, so what I'm gonna do for this technique is I'm going to, I'm gonna use two pieces of cardstock because it's gonna look different on each one. So I'm gonna start with orange and I'm gonna use my acrylic block and I'm going to just scribble marker on this block, just like this. And then I'm gonna scribble some yellow. You can never remember the color order. Think Roy G. Biv. That's the initials, R-O-Y, red, orange, yellow, Biv. Blue, indigo, which is kind of a purple, and then violet, which is a deep purple. Indigo is like a blue purple. And then I'm using this green one at the end, okay? Okay, and I can go back where it's kind of like drying a little bit and add a little more. There we go. Okay, so now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to stamp this on a piece of cardstock just to show you what that looks like. Not so great. But now I'm going to take my water bottle and I'm going to spritz it. And then I'm going to stamp that onto my piece of cardstock. 
Now you're going to let it sit for just a second. Look at that. Isn't that a pretty background? That's so pretty. I love that. Now I'm just going to get my heat tool and dry that a little bit. Yeah, these are just fun techniques. Now this, you could do something with this if you wanted to, but I just wanted to get a little of the excess off so I could lighten it up a little bit. If you want darker, more vibrant color, go ahead and, and use the darker, more vibrant color. All right, so then I'll just trim this down a little bit. You could use a die if you want. I'm just trimming it by my eyeballs here. All right, not bad, not great, but better than horrible. <laughs> <laughs> which is our standard around here if you're new. Okay. Yes, Vicki, you can definitely do this with Simon Hurley stamping foam. It is water. It Look how it just washed right off. It'll wash right off. It doesn't even get in the cracks of the blocks or anything. Very, very simple to do. And so then, of course, I need a silhouette stamp for this one. Okay. So I'm just going to stamp a silhouette stamp on this just to see how it looks. I'm going to do it a little off center because I cut a little too much off. <laughs> it's all right. You guys have seen enough of my silhouette stamping to know what it looks like to silhouette stamp. So I'm not too worried. Um, yes, it would work on jelly plates. The marker really lets go of a lot of color. It's not going to, I mean, it's water-based, you know, they make these markers so that kids can do naughty things and write on a wall and stuff like that. I mean, they're washable. So, and the thing is, I got the hundred pack, so I picked some real vi vibrant primary colors, but there's actually some very pretty colors in there. So there you go. Just a little background technique. That's fun, huh? Okay. Cool. What's that? It's very cool. You like that, Tom? <laughs> All right, so let's do another one. Now, another technique that you can do, I had a little mini stamp set that I thought was perfect for this somewhere around here. Here we go. I'm going to stamp a little piece of... Um, watercolor paper. This is just Canson. What is it? Canson? It's this. Canson cold press watercolor paper. I got this, I think, at uh, Blick Art Supply here in Milwaukee. But I'm sure that, you know, that there's watercolor paper in lots of places. So let's see. Now I'm going to use my... Um, embossing magic tool just to get rid of any static here and I'm going to emboss this in white and the reason why I'm going to emboss this is in white in white is because I am a terrible watercolorist I do not know how to watercolor at all I'm not good at it and I find that if I watercolor over embossing powder the watercolor stays inside the embossing powder and it doesn't like you know ooze out which is not really a problem if it oozes out because Lisa Hetrick does loose watercolor designs a lot in her videos and they look beautiful, but she's good at it and I'm not. So I'm just going with some embossing and watermark ink here and I'm going to stamp the embossing and watermark ink onto watercolor paper. Hello everyone. Welcome. So what's the latest on the next release? Next release is next Tuesday night. That's the plan. We still don't have everything in, but we're hoping it all comes in in time. And I think we're going to go anyway because we know everything has shipped, so it's coming. So, yeah, next Tuesday night, I'll be right here. And it's probably one of our biggest releases of the year. Lots of beautiful autumn designs and... A brand new kit that I'm telling you right now, 
guys. Just, you're gonna want this kit. That's all I can say. You're gonna want this kit. Okay, but that's all I'm gonna say. All right, so I am embossing this now. And then I'm gonna show you a little trick. A fun little trick that I like to do because I can't see. <laughs> and if you can't see, you're gonna love this little trick. So white on white is very difficult to see. And it's hard to see, especially in an intricate image like this, what's what? Like, I mean, come on, can you see that? <laughs> let's, let's watercolor this, right? You're probably looking at it going, I can't see that at all. I can't see it either. It doesn't look much better over here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get some sea glass ink. And I'm gonna, I gotta clean this blending brush because I used some, um, some darker ink earlier. So I wanna get this ink off of here. I'm just rubbing it on a paper towel. Okay. No, I'm sorry, we don't have the ability to pre-order on our website. All right, so I'm using a little bit of sea glass and I am going to just lightly, let's zoom in so you can see this. I think there's big differences in embossing powders. I love our fine detail white embossing powder because you don't lose any detail. It doesn't swell up as much as regular embossing powder, so it keeps all those delicate lines. Okay, so I am going to lightly ink blend some sea glass over all of this. Now, can you guys see that design coming through? I know it's still very bright. Can you see that, Tom? Yes. Okay. Now, it's okay because it actually gives a really pretty mist around the outside of the image. All right. But it also allows you to see the image, which is important. So again, let me find that paper towel. I, don't, I think I threw that one away. I'm just going to rub over this and that makes it even more visible, right? Okay. So now I have just a little paintbrush here and I have an acrylic block and I'm going to pick colors that will work with the sea glass. So I'm not doing orange on this. If I wanted to do orange, I would have used a very pale tan. If I wanted to do uh, you know, maybe some different, I don't know, like I, pale gray might work. But for warm tones, use a tan. For the cooler tones, use the blue. That's my favorite look. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a couple colors here that might work. I think that one will work. Let's use that one. And then I'll use this green. All right, so we'll use those two colors. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to color some of this onto this block. And then I'm just going to do a little light mist with my water bottle. Then I'm going to just pick this color up and I'm going to watercolor. See how nice that looks? And I don't even have to be good because I just move my brush around and the color only sinks down into the holes. So I don't have to be very good at this. This is the, the untalented watercolor show here. <laughs> and then I'm just gonna add a little bit more water in there. If you wanna go a little darker on this one, you can go back and add a little more. And then you can take that paper towel and you could just blot any excess color away if it's too much and go back and just add more. So you can watercolor with these markers. See how pretty that looks? Just bring, you know, add more color and spritz it again if you need more. And I'm just kind of going down near the bottoms and then I'm coming back in with some water and just kind of blending it. And the thing that's nice, they this really blends well 
because um, it's water, it's washable. I mean, this isn't, don't do a watercolor painting that you want to hang in your house. It'll be, you know, it'll last probably six months in the sun and then it'll fade because it's not made for professional art and hanging, you know, in your, your living room and stuff. But, you know, to have fun, just to do a little watercoloring, a little practice. It's coming out pretty nice, huh? And then I'm just going back, picking up the water, and filling in some of these areas. And I like the way it dries. It's, it's kind of fun the way it dries. I want to add a little more here and there. And I like, it's very, it's very soft. Now again, you know, if you go and you take a watercolor class with like Lydia Fiedler or one of these watercolor experts that really know what they're doing, they're going to show you techniques that you probably aren't going to be able to do with these markers. But you can do this technique and it's fun. All right. So there, I got a little bit there. Now I'm just going to quick add a little green. And the reason why I chose that blue is because the green will look great. I just wanted to spray it away from my design. All right. The green will look great with the blue. Oh, I forgot that little flower. I can go back. But again, I'm just adding a little green in here. Green and blue look fine. It'll just be a little more turquoise. Isn't that fun? This is so easy. Yes, I will show the watercolor markers again. And I'm also going to link them in the video description when I'm done. You have to just let me get home first because I'm at work and I, I want to get home. And then when I get home, I'll, I'll add all the extra information into the description. And this way, I'll give you easy clickable links. Yeah, so this is super easy and fun. I, I, sh I shouldn't be wasting too much time on this design, but, um, but it's awfully fun. And I'm just using a paintbrush. You can use a water brush if you have a water brush. But I'm just using... <laughs> this is my paintbrush that I brush away my loose... Um, my loose embossing powder. Let's see here. Now, you know I haven't looked up in a while, so there are probably 20 million questions that I missed, and I apologize. I'm trying to look good here. <laughs> All right. So I do have a word of the day. Oh, you do? Yeah, it's a crafty, stampy word of the day. Oh, great. That's what we need. <laughs> so, wasn't way back, way, way, way back in the early days, didn't they have rubber stamps, uh, rubber stamps that came in sheets? Yes. Yeah. I mean, when I was doing Stampin' Up!, we got rubber stamps and we had to cut them out ourselves. This is probably not going to match, but it'll be okay. Just didn't want to forget her. I'll add a little green to these too. <laughs> there we go. And you had to cut those stamps out with scissors? Yes, you had to cut them by hand. So wasn't it, uh, if you made a mistake and cut through the stamp, wouldn't that be called a stamputation? A stamputation? <laughs> That's great. Yes, that's exactly what it would be. <laughs> oh, goodness. That's funny. <laughs> All right. So there we go. There's my little watercolor. And again, here's what the markers look like. They're called Super Tips. Crayola Super Tips Washable Markers. That's very funny, Tom. And there's my watercolor design, and here's my little watercolor background that I did with these. <laughs> Stamputation. 
Yeah, if you cut off a little piece of the design. Ooh, ouch. <laughs> All right, so I used everything except these washable kids paints. So what I thought with these was, you know how, I could probably use this. You know how when you have a lot of ink blending, let's get this darker. You have a lot of ink blending on your paper and you want to create that speckled look, right? That speckled look. So I was thinking, you know, kind of like the snow look. I, I don't even know how to open these. Oh, let's see. Okay, here we go. All right, so they give you a brush. So if you don't have a brush, we'll use this brush just, just to be nice about it. Okay, and I'm going to take a little of this and I'm going to wet this brush. Wet the brush. And then I'm going to take this white paint and I'm going to add a little bit of the white paint into this water. And then I don't want to get this on my t-shirt, but I'm just going to take my hand here and I'm just going to look, isn't that cute? It creates like a snowy background. Splatters. Yeah. And you've got a whole bunch of colors. You just mix it. Is that close enough? Can you see the splatters, Tom? Yes. Okay. So, yeah. So, you could do some little splatters with this. I love that. Yeah. So, that was my idea for this. And I thought, oh, there's a lot of different colors in here. So, maybe you want to do rainbow splatters. Or maybe you want to do flicking. Yeah. Maybe you want to do black splatters because they always look gorgeous. And then there's a whole bunch of other fun colors in here that you could use. And you can also thin this paint out. You know, it's it's thinned out enough that you could use it almost like a watercolor paint. I'm not going to be able to show up white on this, but, you know, you might be able to get some some watercolor look out of that. It'd be a little more opaque, but you definitely could do something fun with it. All right, Tom, I don't have anything to give away. It's already eight o'clock. I showed everything on my table pretty much. So I think that maybe we could give away my five minute card that I made last week. What do you think? Woo. All right. So let me get it. Let me get it. I'm going to give a better one. I'm going to give the one I made the week before. I like this one even better. So here is a card. Let me show you the card I made. This was my five minute card video two weeks ago. You want to go to the overhead? Here it is. This Whoa. card. Yeah. So let's give away this card tonight because everybody hung in there and watched everything and uh, asked questions and hung out. So I thought I and I promise I know everybody's asking what stamp is that? What's the name of those markers? What's the name? I'm going to list everything on this video in the description. I just need to pack up, go home, and then I'll update the video description with everything that I used so that you'll know. OK, I promise. Um, this card I made using our brick wall background. We've got more of those on the way. I saw somebody ask about birds of a feather. I know that's on the way. And then I used some of our foliage fillers die cuts here to create this part. And then I used our watercolor floral ephemera to add that part. And this is from the Flowing Floral stamp set. And this video is a five-minute card video. It was just two weeks ago. So if you didn't see it, you can watch it and see how quick and easy this card is to make. So who gets it, Tom? All right. The lucky, lucky, lucky viewer tonight is, drum roll, please, Connie, Connie Krause. Yay, Connie, congratulations. Connie. Connie, send your name and your address to info at ginakdesigns.com, and I will get that out to you. They'll get that information to me, and I'll get it out to you. All right, everybody, I hope you had fun. I hope you found some fun techniques that you can use with just basic school supplies. I'll say it one more time. These don't replace the good quality art supplies that I know a lot of you have and that I certainly love. I'll be using these for fun when I'm with my niece 
nieces or when I'm just like, well, my niece's kids, my, <laughs> my niece's kids, and I'll, I'll use them for that kind of stuff. I will not be using these in regular videos very much, but if you're just starting out, it's a great way to have some fun products to try some techniques, great things to do with the kids and the grandkids. And it's also just fun to take if you're traveling and you don't want to leave your $200 pencil set in your room. Take a pack of Crayola pencils or some markers and you'll be fine. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. Tom and I'll be back on Thursday with another Lunchtime Live. And then I'll be back over the weekend with another five-minute card video. Until then, stay safe, stay healthy. We love you all so very much. And mwah, we'll see you again real soon. Bye-bye.